Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be the third match between Jedi 1 and Crane. It is going to be... I should have checked them. I think it's on Aztec. Aztec 2. Uh, I guess I should highlight this map. So you got an... It reminds me of Tau Cross-ish with different tile set and slightly different configuration. You don't have the ramps in the middle. It's like somewhere between the old map... Um, I don't know. I'll just... It's its own thing. You've got natural expansion, very, very wide choke. Inverted ramp is the big thing. Keep in mind, I think I've already highlighted this map, but I'm going to do it again. Inverted map, uh, ramp, so making sure you maintain your natural expansion is absolutely huge. Then, of course, you have big bridges across the middle of the map, so kind of wide open space. It makes it somewhat difficult to uh, defend nearby expansion. So map control in the early game, basically the, ga the name of the game across the board is map control, which I think lens a little bit more especially how wide open the middle of the map is i feel like this is a little bit more favorable towards heavy gateway style play rather than shuttle reaver ish sort of uh, action so maybe dt is a little bit more favorable mostly because if you end up with engagements and shuttles out here you can see how dragoons can just chase that shuttle down uh fairly actively not saying Reavers shouldn't be involved in the fight. It's just like Reavers getting stranded out in space. And it, it's harder to protect uh, shuttle units in this space. Although, obviously, Reavers important overall. I feel like I'm stepping back on my own logic all the way around. Point being, gateway units. Going heavy gateway rather than going tech, I think, is a little bit more favorable. I'd like to actually hear Protoss players' thoughts on that exact comment. Anyway. Crane sneaking out. He's going to sneak out to the 12 o'clock location. Double gateway opener for Jedi 1. That seems to be his favorable opener, usually dedicating those initial three zealots. He actually won outright because of the last scout situation for Crane. And here's one thing for Crane. I have noticed in his playstyle, oftentimes he will get a little bit flustered. He will end up tilting, which really affects... He's got an amazing playstyle, actually. And I think he's actually a very intelligent player. But I think sometimes he will get flustered, and it actually hurts his play. And I think that's just something that comes with experience. I hope it doesn't end up uh, becoming a pattern over time. And I think that's just something that fixes itself as uh, more tournaments get played in. But, <clears throat> Cybernetics Core warping in. Let's see if that continues to be a fact in this match. Last match, of course, didn't even get the scout on the Zealots as they were making their way towards his base. So ended up with Zealots right in his face. Had trouble adjusting. It looks like Jedi 1 going to get last scout as well. Single Zealot blockading the ramp for Crane. Crane going to be able to go ahead and walk right by it. Does see the assimilator and double gateways and should be able to... Let's see how he adjusts. He's again, produce, it looks like getting that initial Dragoon out, skipping the first Zealot, or sorry, no, he did go the first Zealot here, but the three Zealots are making their way, and I don't like this build for Crane on this map. I know this seems to be a standard opener. He's going Citadel of Adun immediately. Wow, to follow this up. I don't know that I like this play all the way around, because Jedi 1, moving aggressively, if he follows this up with more aggression, maybe even plops down a third gateway, so I have an X-Core warping in, third pylon in base. He can get a lot accomplished because, again, you need to hold that natural expansion. Dragoon at forward position to do some initial damage to the, the Zealots. We'll see if Crane is able to do more like he did in game one. I don't know that he's going to have the same sort of advantage where he has the two gateways to get the quick two Dragoons out. And honestly, usually... This is a... I don't know that he's going to be able to hold the ramp to make that Citadel of Vadun really pay for itself. So the Zealot's able to breach. They're able to walk in. Citadel of Vadun's already up. Second Dragoon's out. Now let's see if Crane can occupy these Zealots. One probe down. The Zealot's walking up. See the Citadel of Vadun and see the Templar Archives. And Crane continuing to lose additional probes. Jedi 1 doing exact. This is exactly what he wanted to execute here. Loses Zealots, but is able to pick off a couple probes and get a huge scout in the midst of this. Is Crane going to adjust and cancel? It looks like he's just going to continue with this. It is possible he could... It looks like he's trying to push up with an additional scout to see the response. Looks like we do have a robotics facility. Two additional Dragoons hanging out that natural expansion. It is possible Crane could adjust from this and not build something. Looks like he is going to go ahead and build that Dark Templar, potentially to get a quick Nexus out. I know this is something that uh, I think Jayun wanted to make more Dark Templar openers, mostly to try to get in a position where you could move 
successfully into the mid game and skip a lot of variations. Um, I'm wondering if this is along those lines of thought. But Observatory's up. Jedi One going to have two gateways worth of production. He's continuing to pump the Dragoons. He's going to have that Observer again just off one gateway, knowing that your opponent is going to have Observers potentially out in the field. It just feels like a risky play from Crane, particularly because of all of the implications of losing, this uh, losing control of this natural expansion because of this inverted ramp. Reinforcements are, what do I want to call it, like at three-fourths strength, something along those lines, because of... Because you still have the close distance gap, mind you, but with the misfire chances, your units aren't at... It's not like you have a ramp where you can support on the corner and fire uh, downhill. This initial Dark Templar walking up, getting some initial damage on these Dragoons. The Observer floating out. This probe might get taken out, but that expansion spotted. The Dark Templar still sneaking in. Is it going to be able to get some kills here? I'm actually surprised that Jedi One. So one probe down, two probes down, but the Dark Templar is cleaned up. Jedi One still has a four probe lead overall. Second Observer coming into play momentarily. Another Dark Templar going to sneak to the north, potentially to wait for Jedi One to go ahead and move out. Looks like Jedi One going to play defensively as well. The probe actually being followed, so Jedi One was maybe thinking about taking a quick third. The Dark Templar sniping it to the north. That's going to relieve, uh, relieve. That's going to reveal its location. Jedi One moving forward with his with his observer. I have to assume that when he sees this natural expansion, he's going to get aggressive. But I don't know that he's going to be able to capitalize on it. This Dark Templar eating a lot of damage. It's very low on health. Natural expansions uh, expansions up. Two additional gateways plopped on for Crane. This space is going to be is up much more rapidly than Jedi One's. Also, that third gateway has been plopped down behind this. A Citadel of Adun for Jedi One to follow. But right now, Jedi One has, what is this? Eight Dragoons, a single Zealot. And this would have been an opportunity to... So I don't think he's going to be able to seize the moment now. Perhaps using reinforcements to go ahead and defend against the Dark Templar. This might have been an opportunity to go ahead and push into his opponent's base. Range just going to finish for Crane, so he's going to have, I, I believe, not positive, but uh, I, I should have paid more attention to Jedi One's upgrades. Scouting into the base, seeing absolutely everything. Dark Templar is going to get picked off. So a small smidge of map control being pulled back from Crane. He's going to start pumping Dragoon. So in about, I don't know, two, three minutes, should have a superior Dragoon count. Is behind in the overall probe count but has more gateways to press things. Crane on the opposite corner needs to get his own robotics facility up because currently he has no robo and we do have that Templar Archives finishing right now. Third gateway also coming online for Jedi One. And is he, yeah, he's building Double Dark Templar, also grabbing his third behind this. Observer again sneaking into the main and I think he's got to love what he sees, which is a complete which is a robotics facility, only halfway finished. That's going to keep the observer count also lower, and that's also going to mean that Crane isn't going to be able to get, potentially, as much scouting information as he would want. Shuttle is going to make the Dark Templar's ability to get into this base even easier as soon as they scoop up. And currently... Yeah, this is going to be razor-thin margin, because the army count just about even. And actually, the shuttle looks like it's not going to wander with the Dark Templar. I was looking for an engagement across the north. Crane adding two additional gateways. Actually doing that before... Sorry, with the observatory. The observatory... I don't know about this. This, is, this just seems like bad news. It's going to take a while for the Dragoons even to get in position to help defend this. But the observatory coming online... The Dark Templar walking up. It's the timing of when the Observer gets produced versus how long these Dark Templar are going to have free reign in the base. And I think they're going to have several seconds, as long as Jedi One really books it, to get a massacre of probes. Dropping off in the line. Crane doesn't see it initially. Not able to adjust the probes. Now he knows about it. So a lot of binding disruption. Plus, he's already be behind a base. The Dark Templar actually working on the Nexus here. The Observer about halfway finished, but I feel like they have successfully 
executed their value just in what they've done already. And now it's a race between saving the Nexus and getting the Observer in position. The Dark Templar working it. The first one's going to get picked off. This is going to be close. 131 health left as that second High Templar is picked off. So that's additional mining disruption. While Jedi 1 was actually mining at a third. One advantage for Crane is he does have uh, some High Templar in here. He did manage to morph an Archon. So he has a those beefy units. Dropping a Forge himself might want to actually... Upon seeing that, plop down a cannon perhaps. Counter pylons for scouting out there. I think that shuttle in the midst of everything was picked off. Never mind. No, it wasn't. High Templar moving in now for Jedi 1 to really seal the deal. Crane trying to pick off this observer across this corner. A probe pocketed in that corner. An observer seeing that the way is clear. I don't think this probe is going to see. I think he was just hoping to take an expansion. was hiding himself there. Crane starting to fan out. Supply count is even. That's mostly in army advantage for Crane. He's starting to move positionally on the map, but Jedi 1 just going to walk in with this drop before the cannon's in place. The two Zealots dropping. They're working on the cannon. They might be able to take that Nexus out as well. The High Templar are trailing the probes. And this could be a huge size storm. In the meantime, a big move up from Crane. It looks like the High Templar are not even getting dropped. The Nexus is going to go down. Crane down a Nexus. And getting stormed at his natural expansion. He is half the probe count. Some cannons going to engage these zealots. Jedi 1 can afford to lose this base, though. In fact, might opt to. It looks like he's going to wait for level 1 weapons to finish. Crane has to win it with his standing army. And this standing army is formidable, keep in mind. Two High Templar are out in the field. Is he going to morph it to Archon? He is morphing it to Archon. As Crane looking to engage, Crane's got to win it with what he has. To stay relevant in this match. Probe's actually exiting. He's actually not even bothering dealing with that third base since the probes are moving out of it. I think that is the right play. Dragoon's engaging. Keep in mind Jedi 1 needs to hold this high ground. Archon on Archon action on the front. Keep in mind as well level 1 weapons in Jedi 1's favor plus a favorable reinforcement location. Crane diving in though. Looking to get a side storm potentially on the mineral line. This high temp... Oh, he doesn't have side storm upgraded. So Crane continuing to press into this. Might be able to pick off the forge. He's having trouble focusing on troops. The Zealots able to get on top of these Dragoons. Still has a sizable standing army. Is backing off with the rest of the troops. To try to stagger step. To preserve Dragoon health. Because again he needs to get something out of this attack force. This Dragoon is going to get picked off. So now as reinforcements peel in. That's six gateways to produce troops. Versus it looks like six weakened Dragoons. Keep in mind there's also potential for probe pull. The Zealots pressing forward. It looks like they're going to be able to pick off another Dragoon. And Crane being forced back. More reinforcements for him streaming across the map. But this is buying more time for Jedi 1 to get his own reinforcements on the map. And he is devastating this back unprotected Dragoon line. The High Templar survives, but Crane realizes it is not enough. Going to call GG there. And I'm going to say a bit of surprise because I was expecting Crane uh, to... He's a solid player. I was actually expecting him to win these matches. A bit of a spoiler, which I found out on my own, is uh, Crane withdrew from the losers match. So on the opposite side of the bracket, who, out, whoever drops out of the winners match is going to end up facing uh, Advil heads up. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.